in play. I've been busy with other things, but what I am doing is I'm um, picking out the better races, I think, of the day. Uh, I was considering trading this Trammell race, um, but Oakley, the, Oakley. Track, the liquidity is very poor for a Saturday. Look, there's hardly any money there. The turnover's poor. Do you know what? I'm going to skip on to the next race. I'm not even going to bother. I'm not, it's not worth me hassle. Okay, this is a bit of uh, Saturday trading. It's also Derby Day today. Um, so there are, this is the TV. Market in play. You might notice, um, I'm only just starting. It's uh, nearly three o'clock already, but I'm just going to sort of trade the, the better races of the day, the later on ones. Um, Oakley, Oakley. Pound bank today. Um, and that is literally, that's not for these kind of races. I'm not going to use money in these. It's really still very poor with what's going on in the world. But um, it gives me a bit more money if it's short. I'm only going to use the Snake for this race, race and you know, you can see the quick. Really poor for a Saturday. Um, and safe and safe but hopefully, we've got to make some money over on our ups and downs today on some of their better races. Anyway, see if we can make a quid in the meantime. Jumped it neatly. As do the other four. El Baracho has one behind, and that is the main. So I'm just going to hang around. So there's a little bit of money here, but there's the price is too short for me to trade. It's not worth it. I would have to go in for bigger stakes to make it worth my while. And it's not bouncing around enough. Um, I'm resetting the ladder so you can see what is the favourite, current favourite, and third favourite every time I hit that space bar. Obviously, that can change throughout the race. Um, and you can see there's not a lot of money, really. It really isn't. So, there's not much to be made. There's a couple hundred quid coming there, look. So, I'm tempted just to pop in there because I've got that cushion. If we can get matched both sides of the book very quickly. And if we can't, we have to take out against that cash, which I'm going to do now. Hopefully. No, we might have to take the small loss here. And the rest of it. Yeah, so we had to take 51p loss there. Um, there's no messing around. You know, if you can't take losses quickly, then you'll never be a successful trader. It's all part of the game. It doesn't matter. It's only 51p. It means nothing in the grand scheme of things. As you can see, there's hardly any money there waiting to be matched. So I'm just waiting for the opportunity. So if I'd hung on, I would have actually made a profit on that runner. But it's just not worth taking the risk. Tension to go in again. Someone's beat me to the punch with a bit of cash. Look, the price is shifting out quick. Tension it off because money's coming in the backside. You have to be that quick sometimes. Obviously, keep an eye on where we are through the race constantly. Watching James Bowen's every move. I'm out of here, man. On Oliver Greenall's runner, kneecap is in touch. In last place. Trying to push that in front of the high money, but not too high up, because more money is starting to appear on the backside again, which we don't want. Level pegging at the head of affairs, Rock on Tiger, and Marla's promise. Sharif Star waiting in behind. You best take your time and hook it up. A little bit to do from where she is in fifth place. I'm out of here, man. Now we're a bit late, everyone. I want six ticks. Going better than Rock on Tiger. Sharif Star in third. El Baracho still moving well in fourth place. And kneecap is. Oh, nearly got matched there. Coming <laughs> out. Sucker. Coming out. Running to four out then. Marla's promise. Rock on Tiger. And, and that's it. In the danger zone. So. El Baracho still in fourth. And kneecap. We're close to for 166 profit. We'll move on to the next race. If you want to watch the race, I'll leave it running to see if anyone's interested in who actually won it. Ooh. See that? Look how much this is jumping around. This is just a lottery now. You might think you can make money out of that. And, you know, it's just too dangerous. It looks like that's going to come back and win. You see, because we used the race timer, it looks like El Barocco's going to win. Looks like he's gonna do it. Oh shit, I need to do that. Put the sound off. Still might not though. He still might lose it. Is he gonna get the line? Looks like he's gonna get the line. Does it? Does it? Yeah. So, um, we made a couple extra pence there because we got the winner. But you see that actually 169 will get for that instead of 166 in the end. But you see that I've laid the winning horse. 
And the reason I've made a profit by winning the lane horse is because I've got my timing right. That's what you need to do. You need to work out when is the safe time in the race to trade, when are the markets going to go nuts, when are people going to be able to work out who actually has got a good chance of winning this race and you're going to come back to win. Um, I use the race time to do that. If you're not interested in the race time, there are other ways to do it. If you use different software, you can use like standard in, um, inbuilt timers, but they're a bit rubbish, really. Uh, compared to the race time, or you can listen out to the commentator and hear when they're saying they're like, you know, three, four fellows out or whatever. Anyway, next race. Good luck in the markets. Bucket in play. Saturday afternoon racing on Derby Day. Well, it's a big race day like this. Sometimes you can find the other meetings have poor liquidity because everyone's looking at Epson and not really here. Doggly, doggly. So you need to be aware of that. The last thing you want to do is use the same stakes uh, on a big meeting and then come in here with them or whatever. I've got a bigger bankroll today because it's market, um, Epson Derby Day. But I'm not using the bigger bank or bigger stakes on these smaller races. Not a chance. That's only for Epson. When we get to the races, I'm not trying to one at Epson yet. I didn't start till three o'clock after the news. Five past now. It's only one race so far, or quarter three. I think. So as always, I'm looking for an opportunity. Can't say much at the moment. Nothing that's turning me on. Not really interested in the favourite the other two go, but we have got to keep an eye on it. That price effect for the other runner. That contains at twos. It holds 50% of the market. So if that shoots out suddenly at 10 to 1, all that, that sort of price, if you like, that, that, that uh, amount of the book has to come in somewhere else. But you always got to remember that. And you've got to always got to be careful. You've got to talk runners. Can't say that enough. If you're not careful, you will get stitched up at some point. We're still sitting around there. Nothing is turning me on. There's no rush. Obviously, we, well, there is a rush to get out. We can't play this race too, too far. And I can't do to that line today because it's too short a race. I'll get smashed. I really need to be getting out around here. So I haven't got a lot of time left. And sometimes it's better just not to put any money in and trade it. Now I am looking at maybe picking up a spike down here. Then uh, there's not much of a cushion right the way down the floor, which is scary. But I have to work very quick. But we have got a crossover point here that the market's coming to. Will we get matched? There's a bit more going on here, look, in this runner. And last of all is Albert Camus, and now they're at the top of the straight. I'm out of here, man. Now I'm doing that because it's a big cushion, so hopefully we'll just get out for that one pound, whatever. So there's still a big cushion. We want this to come back in and close off. Can we get full quid there? Olympic no, let's go and get in. Forward. Two and a half furlongs left to go. I'm out of here, man. Might be not. Looks like I'm going to get the minimum. Oh, can we get out? Yeah, 350. That was good. Let's up to uh, 410 there. I don't know why I didn't get much. <laughs> Sucker. Never mind. So you can say we're in the danger zone. It's a big danger to break this. Um, so we're out. You, you notice... I didn't put any new trades in once we got past that danger zone. I had, all I did was concentrate on closing off what I had, um, and all I was doing really was closing off um, for my Market hedge amount, suspended. my profit, uh, what I could do once we got past that. And that's what you need to do in these short races. Pick your right moment, wait for it, uh, and make sure you're out nice and early before it goes nuts. Uh, and you can see there, again, I have literally made a profit by laying the winner. Number one, that's where the profits came from. You can see other horses trading low as well. Look at that, people got stung there on, on that horse. But you can see that. So I'm, I'm laying the winners. I'm laying winners for a profit. But that's all to do with the race time. I'm doing it at the right time. Now I've got to go for Epson Downs quickly because the race has already started. I can see it on the TV. I've gutted about that because I'd rather wait it. I didn't realise they weren't going to hold them up. But I suppose it is Epson, so they're not going to, are they? Now the problem with this is I'm without the race timer and it's only a one mile race. So I might have to skip out on this race, unfortunately. Depends what the commentators are saying. I can't even see it. Where are you? Here we are. No, that's not it. It's the wrong race. Oh no, it's Derby. Yeah, it looks like I've got this up. Where are you? I'm looking an hour ahead. That's why I can't see it. What a donut. 
So to be fair, if we look at the race, we're quite a way into it. Um, I might be able to whiz one quick break of the outside of Folus. But that will be it. For home, three and a half furlongs from the finish. See, the three and a half furlongs to go. The century dream. Bell Rock on the outside. So we want to be at my two furlongs. This stage. We don't get matched quick. Inside is Duke of Hazard going for a rather daring run under Frankie de Tori, but making good progress now. Escobar is switched out wide from Folus. Marie's Diamond Century Dream. Duke of Hazard has nah, run we're into out. a blind alley. So I didn't get matched. Out wide. Bell Rock just trying to hold Bell. Oh, you can see the, the liquidity on this race as a comparison. So, although it's me and mine, I don't really do one more races, to be fair, but I'll make an exception on certain races. But you see, like, I haven't. Risk my friend. I could have pushed something further through. I didn't. We just look at the price coming in. Market suspended. That. Oh, there might be a photo here. Enough to make money on a photo, so I'm just going to put the sound back on. And the judge immediately calls for the photograph to separate Century Dream and Oh This Is Us. 15 years old between them. Here we go to the line. Oh, it's close. It's really close. Oh, this is us gaining inch now, by you know, we'll inch as the line approached. Third because... was Bell Rock, fourth was Duke of Hazard, fifth was Escobar, and sixth was Marie's Diamond. What a terrific if race. You are, what will happen? The Diamond Stakes. Is it the it's dropping in Great up. Century Dream, the green colours, or is it the... We've not been matched by the foot. Ignore him at your peril. 66 to one shot previously when he was a winner in the... Come on. Basket ...earlier in the season, though, this is us. He's gone off a big price again instinctively. And there you go. Well, we get that secret line. match. We need to get out quick before no, they call the belt. It's very, very close. It goes without saying. And it's we're out. So that's three quid. Big. At least we made three quid on the photo. I don't do it anymore. And forwards to the line. The oh, problem this is... with photos is, is you don't know how quick they're going to call the result. Market just... suspended. We can make loads of money, but it didn't, you see. So they've called the result. Thomas has got there. What a horse he is. What a horse he's been for Richard Hannon, and particularly for Tom Marquand, whose association with him goes right back to his early apprentice. So there you go. So normally with photo finishes, the market doesn't often get it wrong. You, I find it very easy money. Um, and like I say, if you've listened to me, you've got to look how close that was. Yeah, 105, that came into. But if you've listened to me before, 102, 105, so people got burnt. Look at that. A lot of people got a lot of money there. Who the hell bets at that lower odds? I don't know. You're crazy. Six grand there, look at uh, 106. No. And then more money even below that added up. But anyway, um, yeah, you can make quite a bit of money with photos. The market normally gets it right. The only time I've ever been caught out was once. And that was because of the pink. Anyway, let's move on uh, to something else. And uh, jumping away So here's another race on Derby Day on a Saturday trading. Um, um, but I've already said doggly, doggly. when you've got these big race tracks going on elsewhere because there might not be a lot of money in these markets. And the last thing you want to do is be using the same state um, when there's something big going on elsewhere and then accidentally using them across. I'm only using 350, so we're okay here. Looking for an opportunity. Um, full tick offset at the moment. We might increase that. The market quite bouncy, but there isn't a lot of money since we matched. Obviously, I'm not interested in trading a favourite. The odds are too low. Not worth it for me. Um, I'm interested in this runner and this runner and possibly Percy Willis if the price comes in. Or possibly even one of the other two here as well if the price comes in. We'll see. Smart boy was a little chancy. Landed a little sleep steeply, but got away with it. Now only a length ahead though. So you can see there's a lot of bounce going on. But the problem is that could bounce through you if, if say the favourite fell or something like that or got pulled up. You could. You know, that could bounce right through you, and that's the last thing you want. Because um, you know, the price that you're laying will contract massively and, and put you in a bad spot. We don't want that. So I'm looking at this here, I'm seeing there's more money coming on the backside at the moment. I'm hoping that's going to even out somewhere. I don't think people, people are supporting it, but they don't, probably don't want it to come below sixes. But the looks of that, not just yet anyway. I mean, we're early days, look at the race time, we're early in the race, so there's plenty of time to go. Was a little less than fluent. Family time landing in fourth. Uh, further back then to Percy Willis up along the inside. I'm just, just waiting for an opportunity, possibly at six if it comes in. Mustn't forget you. I've got money there. That's a dangerous thing to do to forget where your money is. And sometimes it's best to cancel it if you, you've got a poor memory. I've done it before. I forgot about a bet in the market. And I've had, well, I've actually done it a few times before. I've made money by doing it and I've lost money by doing it. Leading up here, first start today for the Don't really think you're out for a profit, and then you actually had a forgotten bet that gets matched and you lose money. Leads up here by a length and a half. 
comes to this flight needs it's all a learning curve though if you're a betfair trader there's a lot to learn it safely and just given a reminder on the landing side for his troubles from space kid has had to angle a little wide we're gonna get out there quick and we're out there it's only 55 pay but it's small towards what is effective I'm going to reset my ladders. So I've got the three top horses at the moment here. That Percy Willis has come right in, as I said it might do. So we're in that now. I'm out of here, man. This is a longer race, so that warning there that you just heard is... I'm not worried about that just yet. That's really for shorter races. I've got me... Uh, uh, and visual and alerts as well. As they head back out of the dip and on towards the home turn with in front. So Percy Willis is going out, out, out again. Clear. Still got a little bit of time, but not a lot. I'm out of here, man. Dangerous. fourth place now, McGregor's charge has moved on ahead of Percy Willis once more. That one now beginning to look pretty tired as Coy Dodd Bill just opens his lead up to a couple of lengths. Get ten to. But the market is moving so quick. And back in fourth, so I'm going below the price where the market's ever well, even been. Will it come back, back down? Back towards us. Family time is in oh shit, I just noticed we're in the red zone. Didn't pay attention there, so we're out. It's only 50 feet. I'd be profit on that race. Why take the danger? Whether that's race back in or not and bounces out, it doesn't matter. We're not going to take the risk. It doesn't look like it will. Anyway, we'll move on. So I'm right over to uh, Tramor. Unfortunately, I come into the race straight off the back of the last race, and the race has already started by 25 seconds, so therefore the race time is not initiated, unfortunately. So I've got no race time, I've got to do my head, which is a lot harder for me. I've got to be on, uh, knowing that I've got that, and also liquidity is quite low at Tranmore, so if you're not used to doing this, I suggest you leave it alone, but um, I'm going to have a little, little look for an opportunity to say I'm not going to be like desperate to get in or anything, because look, look at all this money, £10, £3, £2, there's hardly any money there. Near fence number five. My Oklahoma, so if I was to put Tracy, 50 quid in there, for example, I'm going to be, what am I going to get it out against if the market goes through me? I'm going to lose a lot of money. Memory tree, Michael it's not Connor. worth it. Blue market is edged ahead. Even now, three, four quid could be hard to get out. Downhill by Veneziano Springs and Mikey Hamill. In fourth spot, Le Hachette, Danny Bit more cash over here. The outside is our friend and Jordan Gainford. They're continuing... Ahead of the cool dude, Rachel Blackmore, on the outside of that right. beach banner, and Mark Walsh, the second McManus runner, is the next to no kick nor bite. Cushion there. Ben Wright, but, there Bacall, is, but there is some money, like 26 below, 26 below is quite a bit of a loss. But that's what I thought would happen, I thought I might get capped in a lucky spike like that. Wide of them. Try and get out, green it off for the biggest profit I can get. And Simon Turns, as they that would do 169. Next fence, number six, Clune Dara is at the I'm back of the field. I'm just waiting to see what this market's doing. As they stream out over that one, head up the straight for the second time. Also towards the back at this stage is Bentham and Jonathan Moore. As they come I to the fence in front of the Bear in mind, I don't know where we're in the race. You see, like, even the uh, inbuilt time is not initiated. It's not really runs across this line here. Springs, my Oklahoma towards the inside. Because I'm in it late, so I've got to get out very soon. Next trio, our friend on the stand side on the rail with the white cap is that beats banner. I'm trying to listen to the commentator to see where we are. I'm just going to say the same if you on's left in a second. Don't kick nor bite. Smitty Bacall, the inside of Call of the Loon. Bentham last with one clue down at the back. The first of the two fences and the upper run. one. Blue Marky going along in front from Memory Tree, Veneziano Springs. As I say, this is dangerous. If you're not used to doing it, don't Blue do Marky. it. There's 40 quid there to get out of the game. Otherwise, I'll take the loss right the away down there if it goes against you. That's why I'm sitting so far outside just the price. Just ahead of that beats banner. I just want some mad gambler to pick me up and match me back up six, eight, six. Blue Marky continuing to lead by about two and a half lengths. Mistake at the back by Smitty Bacall. In second is Memory Tree, my Oklahoma third, Veneziano Springs four, the next group, comprising the cool dude towards the inside that beats Banner with them, our friend, and then Le Hachette. Like, yeah. Don't kick nor bite between Six them to one, and seven. Oscar. Call of the Loon is next, ahead of Bentham. Clune Dara has... It still looks like at the moment, but not for much longer, I can assure you. The turn, that'll bring them across towards the straight. The ice cream bands here. Still <laughs> over a circuit ahead of them. Blue Marky leads, two and a half lengths or so. Memory Tree in second, My Oklahoma the inside third, and Veneziano Springs next. They're followed by our friend to the outside towards the inner. Is that beats Banner with the yellow cap between? So this is quite a long race. So. First of the two fences on the uphill run. 
I'm still we'll listening. Over from memory tree in second. Veneziano still listening to um, Oklahoma as they head up the street to defence that after another circle will be their last. Blue Marky, memory tree, my Oklahoma and Veneziano Springs continue to be the leading quartet. No, we will take a, a, a lower price. Getting a bit profit. closer on the outside. If it's not and quick enough. The cool dude has dropped back in. And then we're out and that's it. Still done. Head out on their final circuit. Blue Marky. I tell you what, you don't know how I feel like I'm trading naked or something when I, when I haven't got my race time up because I don't know where I am in the race. It worries the hell out of me uh, not using it. So um, I'm just going to move on now. But it's £2.83 that it was still made. God knows how much time's left because the commentator wasn't really talking about the distance much, was he? But it's one of those things. Anyway, I'm not worried about who wins this race. We'll move on. Having repel, so this is another Saturday race on Derby Day. Got to be careful because we load liquidity on these other meetings. Especially this race, it's only a, 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 an FA race, an S pump, black, black, if you don't know what that means. All the that aren't ready to jump here. Yeah. Um, so we've got to be careful. 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 And you can see the market's bouncing around like a nut up at the moment. Held up last of I'm just going to let it settle Berlin down. Bellevue taking quite a keen hold. The yellow cap towards the far side. Now switching to the outer is Owen Rick The fill rate looks really good, but it looks a bit too good for what money's waiting. That's why the market's jumping around so much. You can see there's a lovely cushion there, but the market is just not too much money on the backside. And the cushion's gone, so that's why I didn't take it. Bit, pressing on a shade. As Still the money's Berlin building up. This side. It's, it is fighting. Of Owen Riff Pearl. And they've opened up by four or five. The lay side is fighting it. doesn't want it to come in too much, does it? To quick buck, but there's just not jackets, quite the opportunity there. It's too dangerous, so we're not going to train. And then Miss Mocktail, what we want is the safest opportunity possible to make our money. When she was last seen at Lingfield. The least amount of risk. And that is Zucayan. It's the way to do it. Other newcomer in the field train. So this is jumping around. I could have got quite a few ticks through there. Four ticks. Many times over. But it's just too dangerous. You know. So right now it's coming back down. And if it continues to come in. Then you could be sitting up here thinking. Oh what am I going to do now. And on his I think you let a loss get out of control. So you're best off just fix yourself in the situation family, in the first place. Leading the way, Wait for a, a nice opportunity. I'm looking at the race timer. Still to speedy hoops, um, just a couple then to quick buck. I can see there's plenty of time in this race left. Tiffany because it's a two-mile race, I can trade right up to at least that line. Is still waiting in last place. Pace has been reasonable for a race of this nature and they continue to be quite well stretched out with Gerlaine Bellevue running in I, I am to have a little look on, on this runner here front of Owen now a bit of money giving Gerlaine Bellevue much peace these two as they continue to yeah, make to their way there. down the back straight and about to head through the wings of where the final obstacle will right, be cushion. in the back Gerlaine Bellevue so you like a match right on the left before my stake is even I've matched on the exit I'm going to cancel it off because the market's creeping Make progress now. The grey colours are um, only made 43 pay, but you could say my exit. I got part matched, and my exit was matched before the rest of my bet was. That's how quick you want to be in and out of the market. You can. Making this long turn back towards home, Gerlaine Bellevue, with now strongly driven. So there's not a lot of money sitting here waiting as a cushion. I'm out of here, man. You've seen my other video the other day for how important cushions are. Gonna make a. I think I'm gonna make a. Re-edit that video and do uh, like a little lesson on it because it's so straight. important. Lane Bellevue has been headed by We're keeping on this Poe. Tiffany Rose. It looks like the price might spike in. The others are right on their Get a tail catch there. And both look hugely vulnerable. Speedy hooves on the right one. I'm out of here, man. Hanging. Look at Miss what did I say? Here you go. And she is being followed by Zucayan. Quick buck the roll. What did I just light say? Blue Tiffany Rose. Should have gone for 10 seconds. Didn't get a chance. Go. Turn it. Owen no. Exactly. <laughs> Right, and that's it. That's me done. Time out. On the left, Nick Slatter. Tiffany Rose trying to raise an effort on the inside. I am tempted to go in on this Tiffany Rose, even though it's late. It's dangerous. But out of it now. Miss Mocktail pressed by Zucayan and Tiffany Rose. Quick Buck needs to find more in fourth, weakening his speedy hooves back in six. Zucayan with a narrow advantage. Tiffany Rose and Tom O'Brien fighting hard. Quick Buck is getting there, getting organised by James Bowen, staying on well. Half a furlong to gallop. Tiffany Rose, Zucayan, Quick Buck chasing hard. Tiffany Rose is going to win this. Tiffany Rose has won it. Second Zucayan, third Quick Buck, and they Market came clear in the suspended. end. Mocktail in fourth.
And that's why you don't ignore the race timer. What an idiot. Why did I ignore the race timer? It told me to get out. I made my profit. What a donut. Never mind. Never mind. It's only six quid. Temporary Wells. Temporary Wells has got a history of running in low on um, uh, one mile two um, third on handicap. And not winning. It's won a couple of races, so I've got to be careful, but most of the time it trades in pretty low. I might be a bit greedy here. Doggly, doggly. I've seen it out, it normally starts at about sort of six years and trades in for about even money and gets out. So I'm, I'm going in here. I've got 75 tick offset. It's a waiting game, this one. Um, obviously, I've got to keep an eye on the race, so I'm going to put the commentary on because I need to li be listening here and what's going on. I don't want the horse to win the race, obviously, otherwise I'll be screwed. Um, so, and if it doesn't like it's going to win it, I need to cancel my bet off or... Um, do you know what I mean? Get out at the right time. But I hope you'll get matched up nice and, you know, not too late in the race at that price, and then the, the price will go out as I expect. So the half a dozen runners then making the run down the side of the course, and Maiden Castle it is, who sets the pace for David Probert, leads by almost two. I'm right back here at the moment. There's no reason why I can't look for another trade in the race at the same time, by the way. The price is contracting. He's now second favourite. Does it look like he's running quite well? I can see why the price comes in. Popped out a bit at the moment. We've got a long way to go, Jeff. And it is Maiden Castle in pole position at the top of the straight, leads by just over. I I'm just going to concentrate right on this train line. So it's 75 ticks for one cap, two lengths to Tower Rec, followed by Tenbury Wells. And Man of the Night is continuing to watch on. Three and a half furlongs left to go. Maiden Castle, it is. I'm out of here, man. Advantage over Basili Carter. Still there to the inside is Blue Boy Tower Rec. No serious move yet from PJ McDonald aboard Tower Rec. Tembry Wells is there coming to the inside. That one to the right as the I'm out of here, man. Now we just need to get out. Developing into a bit of a dash, and it, it is Maiden Castle. Tembry <laughs> Wells is a big one. Sucker. Every chance. Tower Wreck now been asked to pick up on the wide and we're out. And Man of the Night from off the pace inside the final furlong. It is Maiden Castle. Tower Wreck and Man of the Night coming there between horses as they go close home. It is Tower Wreck and Man of the Night. This is going to be another close one. Tower Wreck and Man of the Night. From Market Maiden. suspended. Now, I've done my homework on that one, but that actually traded a lot lower than I expected it to. Look at that. That came right the way into um, 300 quid matched at 123. If I had, if I'd loaded my my bet, I could have. There's a photo here. Hang on, there's a photo here. See if we can make some cash quickly. We want, we want ten ticks. Don't, we? don't know how long this is going to go on for. Price is quite high. Come on, matches out. Right, it's taking so long, so I'm gonna to have to. Might I should take a loss on this photo. We can go in again, but look, that price is creeping in. I don't like seeing the prices creeping in on photos like that because that means that possibly it's closer than what I thought. No, that price is creeping in. That's that's. I don't like seeing that. I don't like seeing that. I like it bouncing around its point. So, oh well, we took a two pound nineteen on this photo. We made what I think eight quid on the other photo. So I'm not that bothered. But it's no, it's closer than what we thought. And it's creeping in that much. But I've seen a price creep right the way into one oh one before, and then go right the way back out. And I've shit my pants because I've had loads. Of, look, look at that. That is nutty. I don't like the look of that. So, yeah, I was wise to take the 218 loss. But um, I do usually make quite a lot of money on photos, so I'm not bothered. I made 18 quid on this race for any of the prices. I don't know, there's a lot of money coming in. Look, thousands of pounds there. Just look at it. What you've got to be careful is you don't want to get caught in a dead heat. Luckily, where I've made my money, my horse isn't involved, so I can't get caught in a dead heat there. But look, this is this is coming out like a good and so I am tempted just to 
put me as how long has this been going on for? So I've just made my money back straight away. Got lost on the other one. Let me get another 10 ticks very quickly. There's a lot of money bent on the lay side there, which is a good cushion. You say, like I, like I talk about and play, there's a lot of people wanting to lay this. But what we don't want to do is get caught when they call the result. So you've got to be in and out very quickly. And this is going on for a while, so I'm getting a little bit scared, to be honest with you. I think I'll call it a day. So if we can just green off here. Uh, maybe green off here then. And you can see, so I, yeah, I lost a few pence on the photo there. I'm still tempted to go in one more time. Because when they're this close, I'll go less ticks just so I can get my, uh, the, the, the money's starting to calm down now. It's the thing you want the money to be bouncing around like a good and people have put their money on the photo, I think, now and they're probably just waiting for the result. No, take that out. See that money coming in there? Don't know. But like I say, you, you know, if that's a dead heat, then I'll, I'll, I'll have a bigger loss there. We don't want a dead heat. Anyway, we'll move on to the next race, but that's photo finishes for you. Um, like I say, I do normally make profit from photo finishes, uh, like a good one, really. Um, but yeah, this one's just going on forever, isn't it? Shame there's no sound, or quite no sound in there. And guess what? I'm missing it. It's down 345 race, which is what I really wanted to say. But they've got a, uh, a, 20, uh, a 21 pound profit on it. Anyway, it's stupid. Market suspended. It's nice place, so there's a bit of fun. They're bastards that I don't get the result, look. Never mind. There you go. Christ. I think that was a... Uh... I think that was a dead heat, wasn't it? Looks like it was a dead heat. I've missed Epson, so we're not going to rush about that now. So that means I'll, lose, I'll only get half my bets on each one of these. So I'm not sure whether I'll... Well, that will have to come back and look at that later on the results because that does mess things up. But it doesn't affect my big profit though on Sunbury Wells because that wasn't involved in the photo. It's only these two horses where you're going to get problems with a dead heat. But yeah, you should be aware of dead heats if you're um, if you're looking at photos. And if you see prices come banging in like that and it's been on right on the outsider, then you know people have got sort of freeze frame. They do it quicker. You know, there's people that make fortunes out of this and they do it quicker than what they do on um, at the racetrack. By slowing down the video and, and, and working out who's won or lost. Sometimes there's only a little bit, but the markets have normally got it right. There's a lot of greedy people in that, and that's why you can normally pay money off it by going with them. Anyway, so this is another Saturday afternoon race at Hexham. Um, just to remind you, it's Derby Day. Um, so the big race is going over on Epson. Oh, funny enough, the last one. <laughs> the last two. I haven't actually traded a race at Epson yet, not properly. Um, but I do want to have a look at the Derby. I'm using a bigger bankroll today, uh, 150. I've got some money to come in there, but because it's quite open finished, it's probably about 20 quid to add to my account. I'm waiting to, for that to happen. I'll take a bit of time. Um, I'm not going to rush into this race. I've got to be careful not to use too big a stake because the ones looking at Everton and they're not going to be bothered about uh, which race over here, so the quality is going to be poorer. Um, and you've got to be careful if you're switching between like big meeting days and then to poorer. Um, poor, poorer meetings, you've got to be careful you don't accidentally use the same stakes because if you do, you're going to put yourself into a lot of trouble if you try and treat both meetings the same. Anyway, let's see what we can do. Lots of time on this race, it's a free mile race, so I'm not too worried about getting in just yet. I'm going to wait for a perfect Comes over the next fence, only a head or so to the good. They've all taken that safely. Classical Milano followed by Speak of the Devil on the outside. We're back in behind them, absolutely, Dylan. As just reset in with a spice bar. The devil just perhaps they're jumping on. Blake Rigg, the black and white striped sleeves, a little deeper out on the track, going a bit keenly as well, perhaps just wanting to go a bit faster than the rider is willing to allow, with similar comments applying to Hidden Cargo. Then along the inside, a recovering Valley Egan hero. Without deeper Shaughnessy, as they come to jump another. 
and that the back end of the field on taking that are Oscar Sayer. So, yeah, still just waiting for an opportunity. There's not much going on at the moment. I'm interested in looking. These prices are going at threes, but I'd, I'd prefer them to be sort of at 4.0 between, between 4.9 and a no, and about, well, it depends really. I like to just give a crossover point. I like six as well, but I wouldn't want to go in at 5.7, for example. You know, I don't understand why you need to understand how value works. Lessons to learn. Three second ladders again, so I've got the three cheapest ones or the three lowest odds on here at the moment. I don't know why, because that looks like a spell. I'm just going to check my sort options. Yeah, we've got it on price. If you're not sure how to do that, right click, go to sort. You can sort it how you want, and I recommend you sort it by price. A little bit of ground, and speak of the devil has now moved on more meaningfully. It has so, yep, still just waiting. Coming into the inner loop of the home straight here at Hexham, and soon enough they will be at the halfway uh, stage. Sometimes trading can be extremely boring. If you find it fun and exciting, and you get an adrenaline rush out of it, and then you're doing it wrong. Um, because it shouldn't be. You should get to the point where you should build up slowly. With small stakes, and you'll get to the point where if you lose or make 50 quid in a race, you know, you won't bat an eyelid, and that's the way you need to be because that keeps you calm and collective. Um, you'll probably not like that right now if you're watching my videos because if you are only 50 quid, I don't think you'd be watching my videos to learn. Um, but if you, um, you know, once that's what you need to be, if you're having so much fun, then lower your stakes, get used to it, and then eventually you won't bat an eyelid. I've heard people that don't bat an eyelid if they make a thousand or lose a thousand pounds on the race, you know. They're way above me, though. I'm not claiming to be that good myself. But there are many people like it. So, in front narrowly from absolutely delightful market's bouncing around nicely here at the moment. There isn't much of a cushion, unfortunately. But I'm going to put some money in here now for four clicks. Not a lot. Let's see if it bounces back down to me now. Um, there is 42 quid there, there's 68 there. I've got my eye on, I've got my eye on, on these bigger numbers that I might be able to get out against if they stay in the market if it goes wrong against me. And now, hopefully, we're straight out. Some money's put some coming in. I've got to try and get out quickly for a lower price. And it's just typical, my video is bloody gone. I'm going to go for a loss, unfortunately. And I'll, I'll just, I'm just, just desperate to get out now. There you go, so it's a 160 loss and my video is packed in, so God knows what happened there. There's still more time in the race, so... And, it was speak of the devil and that is the danger of not having decent cushions, you see. So I've lost 160, I might have got out for 40p loss had I had little cushions. And that is the way it is. It's not over yet, though. I'm out of here, man. So now we're getting late on the race, so I want a few more tips. So I'm not bothered about losing that 160, it means nothing to me. And that's the way you've got to be about trading money. You've got to be getting out, not let it affect you emotionally. Of the devil on the outside of absolutely <laughs> sucker. Third is Blake Rick. Classical Milano is in fourth place, ridden along but continues to respond. A little break I back off those to Oscar Ceremony, who now moves through into a fairly distant fifth place, but still a fair way to catch up as they now come towards the third fence from home. Speak of the devil and absolutely Dylan with a leading. Doesn't like me, Art. Looks like this is going to be a losing race, but say so what you have losing races, and I'm not going to be stupid. I'm just going to accept the fact that I've fucked up, but I didn't cock up. I just had to take a loss um, and go from there. Oh, there was an opportunity here, though. Look. Another eight or nine away in third is Oscar Ceremony, then Blake Riggers now I'm just hard to re in fourth. Fifth is Classical Milano Resist and them. a little break back <laughs> off him to Hidden Cargo and at Bally Egan Hero. Speaking Sorry, sometimes it's just hard to resist when you see a moment, but I don't recommend you do that. To be fair, I recommend them. that you just take to you know what you're doing. Because um, I was in the red zone there, but I just saw the opportunity. To absolutely Dylan who landed in second, back in third is Oscar But you've got to understand, that's for me, that's, that's me looking at 10 years of markets and, and understanding how they work in patterns. I mean, obviously, every market is different, but there's a lot of patterns. And the more markets you'll see, you'll see, you'll start to recognise patterns. The more and more you see them, the more and more you pay attention. But it all takes time. Market it takes a long time. suspended. You can see that traded right into there. It never looked to me like I was going to win the race. I could see the amount of money bouncing around. So I managed to actually turn a loss, 160 loss, into a £3.57 profit. Anyway, we'll move on.
So I'm looking at this race at Worcester here. Two miles seven burn on. Oakley, Oakley. On a Saturday afternoon. The liquidity is quite poor, but that is probably quite poor because Epson Derby is going on on the other channel. And they've got Simon Cow on TV. Oh, if you watch my other race where I made like 20 odd quid, it looks like that money's come in, so I'll show that in a second. Um, first thoughts on this race is to put it really poor. Um, it's dangerous, so obviously, stakes alone, £3.50. Uh, looking for a good cushion. If you haven't seen what I did the other day on cushions, I recommend you look at that video. In fact, I'm going to re-record that, talk over the top and show it in slow-mo to help everybody because it's so important. Um, there's no cushions in this market. It's dangerous as hell. Maybe a little one there, but it's only 100 quid, and if that goes, there's nothing below you because that person can take that money out of the market whenever they want. So, just waiting for an opportunity. In the previous oh, race, in the bumper for Robert Stevens, 12 away from the significant career milestone of a thousand winners. Still just waiting. I'm Denny here in second. Waiting and waiting. And Powell and sizing at midnight. Like I always say, trading should be boring. Have your fun spending your money, not earning it. And then Harry Skelton, champion. This is a job. If you want to treat it seriously, you've got to treat it like a business. Career successes. Now, there's a bit of money backed up here. Of Big Bad Bear. That could be the same person for all we know, though. Um, but the price isn't bouncing enough, and also the odds are low. You see, one of them has been cancelled off. Looks like that one might get matched. They look more serious. But it's buttering up too much, and it looks like that's probably going to go, and the price is probably going to contract in. If you're a backer, this would be a good time to back. I think that's going to pop in, and there you go. So you could have got matched down there as you flip down. It looks like it's going to come in more. Not my style. I've done it before, and uh, I don't, I don't like backing first. In play. Towards the very end of last season, and the back marker is a big. So I'm just having a quick look up here. I think I'll be rather than looking at this. I think I'd rather look at this horse here. But again, there's no money anywhere safe. So what you want is a spike to come in. And I'll have that there. And you see, I've only put four quid in. It's going to make me hardly any money cut the pence. It's going to up it to eight now because there's a bit more cash in the market and it's bouncing above me. But we've got to be careful if it goes through us. Where are we going to get out? We're going to struggle. And don't forget, there's a two second time delay in play. Before they hit the market, and that can cause you problems if there's not much money. Canyon City doesn't want to race for more than two. I'm going to cancel that off. Still a long way to go to Umdeni in second. There's been little to no change. As you just said, the commentator just said there is a long way to go as yet. So, um, I'm tempted to just put a speculative price in there in case the market pops down. We get back out as it pops back out, so we're staying outside the price, but it's at a crossover point. So, like, we want something like that to happen, not just happen there, but a little bit lower. Canyon City, Adam Denny, no drama there. The reason I want to go in at four is I'm getting value there. Now, the market's creeping, so I've cancelled it because I think that's going to go through me, which it would have done. You see that now? I might have got out for a scratch, but why bother in the first place? So the market's now sitting around that price, so not interested. Let's reset my ladders. I'm out of here, man. Midnight up might be interesting. So again, I'm going to put a speculative price in. I'm at a crossover point, so I'm getting the best value. Um, if you don't understand why, it's because the tech, tick value changes. See, so below that. All right. Sizing at midnight on seats there at the night. I cancelled that. I didn't even hear what horse it was. I would recommend you do that because had that been something else that fallen, the price could have come crashing in. So we won't make no money off size at midnight now, then. This is a shame because I thought we might have done. So still waiting for an opportunity. I'm running out of time, to be fair. I'm out of here, man. Right. I think I might better get some money on this job. It's placed quickly through now. We need to get out quick. And we're out. <laughs> Sucker. I can go through one more. I'm a bit more experienced, so I just on doing it. And we're out. And that's me done.
Now we're in that danger zone. You say, I don't want to trade no more because this is when the markets are going to go nuts. We're squared off. Six pounds twenty-eight or six pounds thirty-eight. Right, I'm going to move on to the next race because I want to keep keep an eye on what's going on uh, over at the Derby, which is coming up. So show you that again how important the race timer is. So we made all that profit because that Javi play actually came back and won the race. So again, I've made my profit by laying uh, the winner. And you can see we got obviously the biggest profit on that one, which was £6.38. Anyway, moving on. So this is the Epsom Derby, arguably the biggest here, race man. of the year. Um, the prize money is about a million and a half, I believe, seconds. Uh, and about 650 grand, something like that goes to the winner. So there's a huge amount of money involved. You can see straight away, we're looking at this pre-race at the moment. And you can see there's thousands of pounds being matched. There's three million being matched already. Um, in actual fact, it isn't that high, I don't believe. Um, but this is because of COVID-19. On other years, you might see that as many as much as 10 million. But we'll see what that goes up to. But what it does say to us is if we get an opportunity in play, um, then we can get bigger stakes through because there's going to be bigger money passing by. But we've got to treat it like any other race. The only difference is we're going to use higher stakes. That's all because there should be more liquidity. So what we're going to treat this is the group one race, high liquidity, look for an opportunity, do all the same things as normal. We're not going to go mad on it. I've only increased my stakes to 750. Now, bear in mind, I can click the button four times and put like 28 quid for it or whatever, 30 quid for it, um, in, in, in one transaction. So, or I can click it once for a 750, where recently I've been using 350. So I'm not going mad. We've got to consider the fact that COVID-19 is going on. Yes, there are people at the racetracks. It's a bit weird watching people with top hats on and, and masks, to be honest with you. I find that quite amusing, but it, that's life for you at the moment. So, like I say, yeah, this, is, this figure's probably shook up quite a bit. Um, I'm looking at it on TV as well, as well as this one here. I've got the TV on, uh, although I've put the sound off on the TV now, so I can talk to you. Um, it's just starting to load up. I reckon my TV pictures are about maybe four seconds behind. But this picture here for Betfair, I compared the post time to my lifetime on um, the Geeks toy. The Geeks toy is only going to be a fraction of a second behind. I'm using a wired connection down to my router. I've got a shit hot inter internet connection. Um, so I know I'm running at about sort of uh, about 80, 80 meg basically connection. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I know the race to the, the post time was only about half a second behind. So from what people are seeing there live, if anyone's got a computer, they've maybe got three quarters of a second advantage of me. That's it. Um, I can deal with that because um, it doesn't really make that much difference. By the time you have to click and in play and, and place your, you have your two second delay, it's not going to really matter much. So I'll put the sound on. It is the biggest, like I say, probably the biggest race of the year for the flat season. Uh, that's argumentative. I like the guineas better at Newmarket, but I'm a Newmarket fan because I come from just down the road. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look at this and uh, hopefully make some cash. Maybe a lack of, of pace at one point in that race that got him into a bit of bother as well. Temperatures are still. I was just thought if you're trading this yourself, you might well be. Uh, you might be able to spot yourself in the market because a lot of people are going to be trading this, obviously. So if you have a look through and remember where you went, you might be able to spot yourself. Um, I've looked at other people's videos before and I know I've traded the races, I've never been able to see myself, but it's an interesting thing to have a look at. If you're paranoid anyway. Right, this is the same. For a day R from stall one will be the last. So for the 2021 Kazoo Derby, let's join our big race commentator, Simon Holt. Ready. And Market suspended. For the 2021 Market Kazoo Derby. In play. And getting away strongly was Gear Up, who goes to the front with you, Spirit Bolshoi Ballet. So what I say first, Phil, Blue Jacket, with these bigger markets with a lot of money, you can see they're going to be buttered up a lot more, which right, takes the opportunity away. Why, well, they're not always the best way to trade. And just lost out in a little bit so we're waiting for the opportunity. We're we'll looking for that bounce. You see how buttered this is up. That's because there's so many people in the market. 
There's a bit of uncertainty on the favourite at the moment, but the odds would be late for me to play. So I'm not even going to have that up. As they begin their Look at this John Leaper. Uh, uh, a lot of people fancy it. I think because the uh, Aaron Aaron Big Frankel in the dark blue one of them is sitting third, um, chasing the leaders, Max Sweeney, with but we'll wait for him to change seat. I mean, it's not massive, but you can still see this is just a favourite, isn't it? It's too buttered up. Then one ruler, second, last, and lastly, I'd rather not trade the race, Lee even though it's a derby. I'm making a loss. Bear that in mind. Bear that in mind. They were looking at the favourite up here. Followed by on the outside by Joy Ballet, the red-hot favourite. Adair is on the inside. We might be able to get Followed by Hurricane Lane. Third realm is next. Too quick for him here. Possibly. That's because of all that money below me. You see that? I'd rather be down here, but... Can't get down there. Now listen to the commentator. Five furlongs left. Under Ben Curtis from U Spirit second, Bolshoi Ballet is moving well in a good position on the outside. No so that's two fifty. A day around the inside. Maybe then a bit more if the Lander price comes in. Down now to Tatnam Corner, and they swing for home, and it's gear up from U Spirit. Bolshoi so I ain't got a lot of time left. Up on the outside, a day are back on the inside from. Mo I'm out of here, man. Then Hurricane Lane. What a lot more Sweeney ticks. is on the move now, and John Leaper making ground from the back of the field. Third Realm is outpaced. One ruler begins to run on. Southern one more possibly. Well and now a day goes on up the far side from Hurricane Lane. It's Godolphin. One and two. Bolshoi Ballet is not finding it. Here, man. And it's a day that leads the Derby field. Three lengths clear. So that would do, mate. Can we just get out? We're at the end of the race now. Shock result. A day and Adam Kirby. Adam Kirby for a first classic success. And a day is pouring it on and striding clear to win the Kazoo Derby. And they are with Market five suspended. Mojo Star second, Hurricane Lane third, time for fourth between yeah. McSweeney and Third Realm, followed by one ruler, then New Spirit, Bolshoi Ballet, well beaten John Leeper, Year Up, and Southern Lights. Okay, so yeah, so you can see, so that was the Derby race. Um, I think I managed on it. I could have probably used bigger stakes actually, I could have got bigger ones through. Um, if you look at what we actually did. Um, I mean, I only made 12 quid. I mean, I didn't go crazy. I said the liquidity wasn't as good as what it's been on other years. You can see there's only been four, not even four and a half million match. And you've got to bear in mind, right, they include the bet twice. So if you place a bet at, say, four, that they in, at £20, they could account that as a £40 bet because they include the layer money as well, even though it's only a 20 quid bet that went through the market. So in rea reality, there's only been like two and a quarter million pounds that have gone through this race. But because the little query has been higher, I've been out to use the highest stakes, I've not gone nuts. Um, you can see a lot of my races, I make sort of three, four pounds, bread and butter races, maybe less, sometimes 190 or whatever. And on this one, we've made 11 pounds 73. Um, and that's it, really. On other years, I might have been out to use bigger stakes and had that more like about 70, 80 quid. But you've got to just wait for the opportunities. You can't force them doesn't matter what the race is if you go crazy and just try and fall getting loads of money through you'll end up making a loss as a long run and that's what we want to do it's all about a long term game anyway i hope that helps you and i uh, hope you enjoyed the derby and if you're in that market somewhere hope you saw your own bet i'll catch you later bye bye at this epson race and uh, i want to point out a couple of things now this is arguably the biggest meeting market on the flat race market of the year in derby day but now channel now ITV sorry racing is finished. You can see that liquidity has dropped massively. So, oggly, oggly. so I'm drop, just dropping down to smaller stakes with COVID nineteen. I can't be too you know I've got to be careful. I could possibly go to four fifty. I think I'm going to increase to four fifty. But I'm certainly not using my seven fifties, which I was on the Derby a little while ago. I could have probably got more for the Derby to be fair. So we'll see if we can make some cash. It's a short race, so I need to get on with it. Had to work fairly hard to get there. Group one power under Sylvester de Souza. Epson's so it's cushion here. Look, front, I'm just waiting for a good opportunity, really. I don't want to go in too the high. Odds, and there's some over across over point. That makes a difference. The inside is Australis. 
Further back to Midnight's legacy, first three just towards the outside. Oh, I am tempted to go into tens, which gives me a massive liability. But no, the market's the down. You've got to be so careful if you get these bigger prices. But you see there's a brand just sitting by me. That's why I'm happy to do it, as long as that money stays there. Oh, Christ, I've just realised I'm on four ticks still. Ten ticks. See, that money's gone, so we've got to be even more careful now. And the reason these prices are so high is because this odds on is taking too much of the market share, if that makes sense. Are disputing second Australia. So you've got to be so inside. careful, really. Out. Three horses wide, two lengths away or two. Last thing we want to do wait for the is Lord, get screwed here they are tracked then by autumn with a huge liability. So we're in and out Pensacola, very quickly. Power, past course and distance Still keeping an eye on the couple of how much the red force one and the trader second is left in the race. Australis is next round the inside of the now if we get matched up. Percy Street under pressure. Wait for the Lord tries to stay on for out of here, man. Will we get matched or not? Pulling very wide is Autumn War. Group one powers the target here. The trader in pursuit from Red Force. Probably not. One. I am tempted to go for quite a few ticks here. Sizzler, switching to the inside. I, going we're going to quit out. Out wide. Meanwhile, Midnight's leg. I'm out of here, man. You see, although I'm not up to that nine because it's a short race, I need to cut out early. So I've done that. I'm hitting this button here because that cancels. <laughs> you know, uh, and you can see. I don't know. We might get a photo here. Let's have a look. Is it going to be close enough for a photo? No, it's not. Unfortunately, because I can make Mark quite a lot of money on photos. They happen. But that's probably me done for the day. So I'll just show you my results and what actually happens. Today, I'll pull them up. I need to just quickly reset this. So here we go. So you can say I did have that uh, six pound loss where I ignored the race timer yet again. That's why the race timer is so important. Six pound that cost me, but it doesn't matter. We still made fifty two pound twenty six for the day. Um, made eleven pound seventy three on the derby. A few quid here and there, and obviously I had that other one where I've done a bit of research on the twenty one quid. So if you look at what I've actually done today, because I've been doing other things as well, don't forget. I don't sit here at the computer between every race and they're, uh, you know, close to each other, like those ones were. I'll take a break. If there's a 20-minute break, for example, I've just been talking to my missus for the last quarter of an hour downstairs, made her a cup of tea, had a cigarette and done other things, you know what I mean? But if you actually look at the amount of time I put in, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 minutes work today, and then maybe you might say I put another... 15 minutes uh, in during the day in sort of research. So basically, I've made £52.26 for an hour and 10 minutes work. Now, I'm not saying you can do that every hour and 10 minutes of the day because you can't. But what you can do is you can create yourself a nice life by not having to work loads of hours during the day. You pick out the right hours to work. You get yourself like a, something reasonable. If I just show you for example, for the last uh, three days, I'll well, show, show you since yesterday, and I'll just change the date to go one further back. I don't want to show too much of my private information because I have got a child and an ex missus that wants all my money. So if I just show you that, you can see. So I've made one hundred and eighty-seven pounds seventy-five, and you can see there. You know, there's hardly any losses. I did have a twenty-pound loss, but you can see. And a sixteen pound loss there, but you can see there's that they're mainly consistently all the time. One hundred eighty-seven pounds. That's thirty-eight markets. So forty markets would be what? Um, crikey, how many minutes is that? Pull the calculator up quickly. So if we seriously look at this, I'll just put that on. I will give you an accurate figure on what you know what you can do and bear in mind i'm just using small stakes it's going wrong i need that in pin mode sorry about this I do apologize just typical in it when you could record the video for that to happen i won't do that either right so if we say 38 markets 38 times five minutes equals divide by 60 
three days racing so we can add another 45 minutes so essentially i've done four hours work for 187 pounds 75 since thursday there's no reason why you can't replicate this or make it even bigger i don't need much more money than this i'm not bothered about it i've got other streams of income i don't i don't put all my eggs in one basket but if you wanted to there's no reason why you can't double that up and use double the stakes and make the money it's up to you if you follow um my videos i will give you as much information drop me an email if you've got any questions if you need the race time to help you which i highly recommend you see i, I ignored it once they made a six pound loss so it could have been six quid up on that and i think you'll find the other day when i lost 15 quid that's because i ignored the race timer again so that has paid for itself twice over in the last week um if that makes sense because well i've lost just by ignoring it so you think about all the other races where i would have made i could have made losses had i ignored it highly recommend it um i'm not a salesman though so if you don't if you you know if you don't want it it's not a problem i still like to hear from you drop me an email drop me a comment Please don't forget to hit like, don't, please don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll keep creating more videos if you do that in exchange and hopefully make you be able to replicate exactly what I do. All the best in the markets and I look forward to seeing you soon. By the way, I've been doing this uh, trading on a particular day, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, whatever. Um, I'm not trading tomorrow Sunday, I'm going down to the beach, so I won't be back to at least Monday next week. Um, I did do a Sunday video I think the other week though if you want to add that in and have a look at that. Anyway, best of luck, and I wish you the best. Bye-bye. Introducing Geek's Toy Trading Software, the fastest, most customizable, and most popular software for betting and trading on Betfair and BetDAC. Designed by professional traders for you. Key features include unlimited desktop settings and the ability to create custom profiles to suit every user's needs. unbeatable speed, real-time prices, and one-click betting. Unique management of multiple markets. You can bet or trade on multiple sporting events simultaneously. Support for eight languages. Context-driven help on every window. Searching and bookmaking, training mode, advanced charting, enhanced navigation, support for Betfair coupons, stop loss and more. Geek's Toy, possibly the best Betfair and BetDAC trading software in the world.